All right, so now we're going to try to investigate what can work do. And work can do one of three things. So if we um, perform a certain amount of work on an object, one thing that it can do is it can change the potential energy of the object. So you can cause it to gain potential energy, uh, you know, by lifting it up or something like that. Another thing work can do is it can change kinetic energy. So you can make an object go faster. Um, and the final thing it can do is it can be wasted in the form of heat, um, either to friction or air resistance. So all the work that you put into an object will do one or all of these three things, but however much work you do, it gets distributed amongst these three different things. Uh, so here's an example where we're pushing a crate across the floor. And the crate has a mass of 30 kilograms, which means it weighs 300 newtons and we are using a force of 150 newtons to push it across the floor and we end up pushing it across the floor a distance of 10 meters so the first thing we want to do is calculate how much work is being done here so remember work is force times distance and if you are wondering again which force to use you use the force in the direction of the distance so it's being moved 10 meters to the right so we use the force that is responsible for moving it the 150 newtons so it'll be 150 newtons times 10 meters. We wind up doing 1,500 joules of work. That's how much work is done on the crate. Now, what was that work used for? Well, the box stayed on the ground the entire time, so it didn't change the potential energy. The height never changed. It started off on the ground, and it finished on the ground. The kinetic energy, well, it is now moving at 5 meters per second before it was motionless, so there was a change in kinetic energy. Before it was motionless, so its kinetic energy before was zero, uh, the initial kinetic energy. The kinetic energy after then we can calculate one half m, 30 kilograms, times the velocity squared, and then we will calculate um, how much energy that is. In this case, it's 375 joules. You might notice, remember, that's the same unit as work. Energy and work have the same units, so 375. So we said earlier there was 1,500 joules of work done. 375 of that went into the kinetic energy. None of it went into the potential. So the rest must have been wasted as heat. So to calculate how much, we'll just subtract 375 from each side. And it turns out that 1,125 joules was wasted as heat. If you ever push something heavy across the floor, uh, you notice that you're really there's a lot of friction. You do lose a lot of energy. Um, and so that's one um, analysis of this. All right, here's another problem. It's a little more complicated. Now we have a ramp, so we'll draw the ramp. And once again, we are pushing uh, a block up this ramp. And it says the block has a mass of 20 kilograms. Okay, so that's 200 newtons is its weight, but it's 20 kilograms. And we're pushing it up the ramp at the force of 160. So the 160 is pushing it up the ramp. And the ramp has a length of 3 meters, so it's 3 meters along the ramp. And a height of 1.5 meters. And we're trying to, again, figure out how much energy is lost to heat. So let's do the first thing, how much work is being done on the box. Well, we are pushing this box a distance of 3 meters along the ramp, up the ramp. Mm -hmm and we are using 160 newtons to do it. So the work is equal to 160 newtons times 3 meters, or 480 joules. That is the work. So that's the first thing we figure out. So now again, let's look and see what's changed. What is the change in our potential energy? Well, this time the box has moved. It went from being at the bottom of the ramp to being at the top of the ramp. So there was a change in potential energy. We're going to assume at the bottom of the ramp the initial potential energy is zero. So then how much potential energy did it gain? Well, it's the mass, which is 20 kilograms, times g, 10 meters per second squared, times the height, 1.5 meters. And that ends up being um, 20 times it's 300 joules. So that is what some of the work has been used for. It is also moving at the top of the ramp, so there's been a change in kinetic energy. Change in kinetic energy is, again, if we assume it was zero at the bottom of the ramp, it's one-half times m, 20, times v squared, 2 squared is 4, um, so that ends up being 40 joules. 
and so that's how much has been used in kinetic energy. And so our work, remember, could do three things. Work could give you change in potential, change in kinetic, or heat. So we used 480 in work. That gave us 300 in potential. It gave us 40 in kinetic, and so the rest must have been lost as heat. And if we solve for heat here, uh, 480 minus 340, we will get 140. So we lost 100 and 40 joules in the form of heat. Not as much this time. Um, again, it can vary the pay based on how much friction there is. So that is, um, those are some things that work can do. And technically, um, as you get further ahead in physics, you might get some more strict definitions of work. Um, technically, uh, changes in potential energy a lot of times are not considered work, but for most high school level physics, um, this is sort of how we will define work and it will work. Haha. <laughs> Alright, uh, so until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.